dystonia is a movement disorder, you know, characterized by twisting uh, and repetitive, you know, movements causing abnormal postures uh, that are sometimes tremulous. And uh, it has many different causes, including, you know, genetic causes. The developments in genetics over the last, you know, 25, but especially the last 10 years, you know, have brought up light to many new forms of genetic dystonia, um, including forms affecting in, uh, early in life, but also in adults. Dystonia is a very, uh, unlike, I mean, I mean uh, like many other neurological conditions, you know, but it can be highly variable, you know, from, from patient to patient, uh, from, you know, very um, mild symptoms, you know, to, to very severe uh, disa disabling condition. There is a very known relationship between age of onset and site of onset in dystonia so that for most, not all, but, but for most people in when it starts early in life, in childhood, you know, it tends to affect the limb usually a, a, a hand or a foot, you know, more or leg more commonly. And uh, when it starts, you know, later in life, you know, beyond the third and fourth and fifth decade, it tends to be more localized to the craniocervical area. Uh, the most common form of dystonia um, overall is adult onset cervical dystonia, so affecting the neck. Um, and also the older one is, you know, the lower the likelihood of it spreading so that if it starts early in life, especially on a limb, it has a high chance of spreading, you know, to a nearby contiguous or even non-contiguous area. So affecting maybe the other leg, the trunk, the arm and move upwards. While if it starts in the, in the craniocervical area later in life, it has very much lower probability of spreading, you know, which obviously it helps, you know, with with prognosis. Certain genetic types, you know, are more likely to be associated with an earlier onset, limb onset, you know, dystonia and chances of spread, like the common uh, DIT tor one a mutation, uh, relatively common you know, among early onset in, um, generalized or with the potential of generalization dystonia, while uh, others, you know, tends to be tend to be mm, affecting, you know, more the neck uh, area. Like, for example, the more recently discovered GNAL, uh, G -N -A -L, um, genetic form that tends to have an adult onset in cervical um, with maybe a little bit of spread to the arm in some individuals, but not the generalization like the earlier in life onset forms. I would say that, you know, that there are quite a few challenges in the management of dystonia. And I would start the first one with appropriate diagnosis. Uh, dystonia is frequently missed and underdiagnosed. So patients, you know, can go a long time, you know, without a proper diagnosis uh, um, and without proper treatment. The challenges in uh, coming you know, in choosing a therapy that would be tailored to that particular patient. So you have to um, mm, most importantly, you know, think about, you know, what is the age of that patient, you know, and where and, and by how much it's affected a body region. If dystonia is localized to a particular uh, body area, let's say the neck, for example, uh, or the eye region, you know, in blepharospasm, in the treatment of choice is usually going to be first botulinum toxin injections. And, and those, in, you know, have their own challenges, you know, choosing the appropriate dose, the appropriate toxin, uh, the appropriate muscles, and then, you know, appropriate follow-up, you know, for, for those patients. If dystonia uh, affects in um, multiple body parts, uh, as in early onset, you know, generalized dystonia, our first line is going to be usually medications, anticholinergics like trahexafenidyl, baclofen, benzodiazepines. Uh, but if, if medications are insufficient and symptoms are very disabling, we'll fairly quickly move on to surgical options. I am right now talking about uh, uh, isolated dystonia uh, in which you know, other diseases that have their own treatment have already been you know, diagnosed. There are specific cases, you know, for example, dystonia related to the use of dopamine blood blocking medications, so we'll call the tardive dystonia, part of tardive syndromes. They have specific medications for those. There are other conditions that can be associated with dystonia that, but are due to uh, other conditions, for example, Wilson's disease that will have its own treatment or dystonia in the context of Parkinson's disease which is fairly common, um, that would have implications on the treatment you know, for their Parkinson's disease you know, that would affect dystonia.